case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In a case that challenged the limits of power held by corporate officers and directors, the Delaware Court of Chancery in 1969 presided over Theodora Holding Corp v. Henderson. The corporate drama unfolded as the plaintiff took legal action against Alexander Dawson, Inc., a corporation under the leadership of the defendant. Trouble sparked when the defendant, who held major control over the corporation, was accused of gross mismanagement and purpose distortion. The defendant had allegedly reduced the board of directors, siphoned off funds to accounts in Switzerland, and dabbled in risky investments that caused the corporation significant losses. The executive's actions extended to the sale and donation of corporation property, the sale of a seat on the New York Stock Exchange, and the donation of shares to the Alexander Dawson Foundation. A controversial $25,000 check written to himself and an $85,000 loan drawn for personal use topped the alleged corporate liberties taken by the defendant. The plaintiff, a minority shareholder, was pushing for the appointment of a liquidating receiver, foreseeing the corporation's downfall. He also sought for an accounting from the defendant for the profits earned from the stock exchange seat sale and the unorthodox donation of stock shares. The court's task was not simple. It was called upon to consider the legality of the corporation's charitable gift while assessing if the defendant had indeed overstepped his boundaries by violating the Delaware Corporation law and breaching his fiduciary duties. The court's decision, however, took an unexpected turn. While acknowledging the defendant's questionable actions, the court denied the plaintiff's request for a liquidating receiver. The rationale hinged on the financial status of the corporation. It was solvent and the defendant's actions didn't significantly threaten its financial health. While the defendant's behavior trode on the edge of legality and corporate propriety, the court found no proof of corporate perversion or self-dealing on a scale that warranted interference. In this high-stakes corporate drama, the court reaffirmed the autonomy granted to corporate officers and directors when it comes to decision-making. It reiterated that courts would not intrude unless there was concrete evidence of misconduct or a clear derailment from normal business operations. The court's decision served as a landmark precedent, sketching the boundary lines for corporate actions and power. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit LSD.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.